Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry. I'm over your horse! I'm in my van again. Means I'm going to go pick up something. Just got a text from the mailman. Quinn the mailman! He says that there's a uh, junk push mower uh, a couple of blocks away from my house. Uh, just for the hell of it, I'm going to go check it out, you know? You never know what you're going to get, you know? Good, bad, whatever. got to be some parts anyway, you know? And it's close by. So Quinn says it was in like this cul-de-sac area. So here's the dead end. It's got to be in here. There it is. I see it. It's a quantum engine. Looks like an MTD with big wheels in the back. So it's the next day. It's a beautiful day out. Let's get that mower that we just found and check it out for a second. So it's your run of the mill MTD. Briggs and Stratton, it's a yard machine. 21 inch 6.75 Briggs Quantum engine, which I really like. They're very easy to work on. I've had a ton of these. A ton. These things go for about $167 at your Walmart or Lowe's. Uh, usually without the bagger. If you buy the bagger option, uh, it'll probably run you about 225 250 with tax and all that has the big wheel on it everything seems like it's sort of okay these things could be tightened a little bit Ooh, that's a bonus the cable actually works and it's smooth too which is awesome when i was picking this up yesterday I didn't want to film because the guy was with his family and stuff. I didn't know how he'd feel about it. So I just put the uh, tripod near my wheel well so he couldn't see. But, um, I mean, it looks all right. You know, it's just really dirty and stuff. As you can see, there's no spark plug in it. So I'm a little worried that maybe how long was this out there? Looks like there's a lot of, you know, dirt and stuff and sand. So it looks like it was probably in the rain maybe and water got in there which is no good it's gas trickle of it not a lot and the oil looks overfilled but it doesn't look like it overflowed in oil otherwise the oil will come out here You can't start it, of course, because there's no, no spark plug. Let's bring this over and put a spark plug in. I'm just what I'm curious as to, to whether or not this thing will start. So that's why I'm just uh, taking care of some small things today. Uh, as you know, I painted my, I mean, I uh, welded my deck yesterday. Uh, my welder broke, so I needed a tip for the gun. So I ended up using JB Weld to weld some of the Swiss cheese holes in the deck. And today it's completely cured and dried, so I'm just going to spray paint that uh, JB Weld areas on that deck. And we'll put that deck on that carcass of crap Craftsman LT1000 in the backyard. When I put a new engine on it, that'll probably be my next uh, task. In addition, believe it or not, I gotta get the Jamal Alatet out of the corner. It's been sitting there for a year, haven't touched it. I mean, they didn't move it from here to there, but now I have to move it out. 
See if it starts, because some nut wants to see it. Can you believe that? I got it listed for eight seventy-five. Anyway, so look, got this taken care of. Now it's nice and tight. Cables move. Let's put a spark plug in it, huh? Just found this old spark plug in the uh, my drawer. I don't know if it works, but I'm pretty sure it does. I usually don't have any uh, spark plug problems. You know what? If there's water in here, let me pull on the cord and just see if anything comes out. Let me know if anything comes out, because I can't see it. Oh, dear. Of course, you're not going to feel any compression because there's no spark plug, but it doesn't look like anything came out of it, so that's good news. <laughs> Leaves, water, dust, anything at all. Maybe not. Maybe we got lucky and no water got in there. All right, let's hope we get spark too. Just gonna give this a try now. Feels like there's no blade. That's what it feels like. Uh huh. <laughs> no blade. I took the blade off. How about that? Well, it looks like I'm gonna have to go find a blade if I want to get this thing running. To find out if I have a blade for this, you know. Looks like it's a 5 8. 5 8. Okay, looks like you just removed the uh just remove the blade just to remove the blade you know maybe it was a good blade but uh, this is that MTD four point star thing I'm gonna go look in my backyard see if I can find one that's under 21 inches I found this in the backyard it's a four point see but it's 22 inches curses back to the drawing board again so the only other blades I had left back there are these Craftsman LT1000 lawn tractor ones. You need two 21 inch ones for the mower deck, right? I got lots of them. This one's nice and straight. It's a little rusty and stuff, but pretty sharp blades. Problem is though, this blade adapter won't come off, right? Wouldn't expect it to, because these are very hard to get off. And of course the pattern is the four star, where this is a five star, right? And so when you mount it this way, it won't fit because the four won't fit into a five, right? So I could either try to make this one completely rounded, which is difficult to do because you don't have any tools to really do that, right? But it is easy to simply grind off the four points over here to make this just round, you know? With the impact of a five eighths in here, it'll hold just fine, you know? So I might have to smooth these out. These two tabs over here hold it together, but these two tabs do not match with this one. off by a little and of course they they do that on purpose so that you can't interchange different blades so I'm gonna cut these points off before it's just an MTD push mower fellas okay let's not all go crazy right found it on the street I'm using this new uh, Porter cable grinder this is the first time I'm using a uh, cutoff wheel on this grinder with the protecting uh, cover around it and this handle I've never used it that way it looks like it could be very difficult to get to the spots I need with all this stuff around it you know but it is safe so I'm just gonna try and do it
That was fast, quick and easy. That worked out great. It still looks like it won't fit. It's like the diameter's too uh, too wide. Hmm. That's a tough one. Let's scrape down that more. I know it's not completely centered there, but I don't give a shit. Let's see if it'll start now. Or at least feel better, you know? Ooh! So you know what that means when that comes off like that? I think we have a sheared keyway. The key is sheared in the uh, crankshaft. That's what causes a fully tightened bolt to come loose easily from a couple of pulls. That's what I suspect that happened. Looks like we might have to take this engine apart. But what about my other tasks for the day? This could take all day. Well, gotta change out of my yucky sweet clothes and get in some yucky clothes. Get my tools out. Look, I wasn't gonna work on this, but I'm curious now. I wanna get it started. As you guys heard, you heard some puffs, which means it is getting spark. I do. I'm curious. I wanna see if this thing starts. I wanna see if it is. Just take too long. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay, hey, let's see if that's the flywheel key that's busted. Aha! Holy cow, this is a first for me, fellas. Check this out. Look at that. Not only is it the flywheel key, but it's the entire flywheel that's cracked. How about that, huh? First time for me. Never had that before. Awesome! So maybe if the flywheel key is actually good. Let's try. Oh yeah, that's gonna be hard. I'm gonna have to disengage the brake, right? By clamping the bail handle, then getting a crowbar 
we have to break this off. But it's already cracked though, so I don't think it should be that difficult. Got a clamp. I'm gonna clamp this off. Let's pull this uh, ignition coil thing off so we don't have an accident. Let's see if this comes right off. It should, because it's not connected really. Still seems kind of hard. I'm gonna bang it real quick with a sledge. Got this flywheel. Ooh. <laughs> Didn't need to bang it, just needed a pry. Here we go. So look, the flywheel key is indeed sheared, along with the cracked flywheel. I'm gonna go to my uh, bin of parts in the back and I'm pretty sure I have another one of these. So could you believe I don't have one of these things? I had so many, but you know what? I listed them on eBay and I sold them. So, you know, that, that, that's that thing again where I don't want to get rid of my parts because I know I'll need it someday. But then again, I sell the parts too. So same thing as getting rid of them, right? I don't have it in hand when I need it. So this is like a very common flywheel for quantum engine, right? Then I found this one. I actually have everything other than that. You know, I have the kind that has the key start where there are teeth on the bottom where you can allow it to, you know, the, the quantum key start versions. I have those. I figure I could use it, but I was missing the fan, you know? The, if you have that, you need, the, you need the plastic fan. So I found this one here. I think it's also off of a quantum too. If you compare where the magnet is, right? And the keyway, right? You look at this one here. This is the magnet, same keyways right there at around 11 o'clock you know so it's the same exact keyway I think it'll work it's located exactly at the right spot you know for the timing it's the same exact diameter exactly right and uh, also if you met if you look at the height with the fan on it it's exactly the same height so you know what <laughs> I'm just gonna try this one I mean, who knows, right? This magnet looks like it's been through a lot, so I'm just gonna do this really quick. Just so that the magnet would be nice and clean and we'll get a decent spark. I don't know if this will work, but you know what? I always like to try things that, well, honestly, I don't really have a choice, do I? I don't have the flywheel that I need. This looks like it'll fit. And if it'll fit and it's off of a quantum engine, I guess it'll be all right, you know? So this way you can get a, a good spark, hopefully. At least better than if you had all that spitz on there, you know? Spitz, spitz, spitz is uh, Yiddish. If you live in New York, you learn some Yiddish. I've got a new key. It's an original Briggs and Stratton one that I got off another mower. I have the fake ones, but I figure I'd just use this one that was sitting around. So here we go. We're going to install this seemingly completely different flywheel. Oh, this. The other part of that key is on here. There we go. Look, that's the other sheared part of that original key. Sheared in half. Sheared in half to save the engine components. All right, so I'm gonna line up the flywheel. It seems to fit perfectly on here. I'm gonna shove the key in the hole. Hello. Hello. I wasn't saying hello to you. You said hello. Oh, shut up. All right, there we go. Here, I'm gonna show you. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna. There we go. Right there. And we'll put the cup on here. And I guess that holds the fan in place. The flywheel bolt. Henry, you're not a lefty. 
I know, but I have to hold the camera with the other hand. You have a tripod. Yeah, but the tripod's too far away. You guys can't see well. We can see fine. Oh, shut up. That should be good enough. So look. Turns just fine. Doesn't scrape the magneto. Just eyeballing the air gap. Looks the same, you know what I mean? So you know what, man? I'm gonna just try it. <laughs> Watch, this doesn't fit. same diameter, you know what I mean? Of course, I didn't measure anything. Hey. This part has to go right in there. Holds line up. Just try to spin this a second and see if anything catches. It seems okay. All right, I'm going to put this back now. Okay, so we just changed the uh, flywheel and the flywheel key. Put the uh, foil back on. You guys think it'll start? I think it might. Wait a minute. Got to put the blade on. That's why. Got to put the blade on. There we go. I grinded it a little bit more, so now it's vertical with the blade adapter. The 5.8's back on there again. Tighten this key up. Alright, now let's see if it can start. Well, we saw it did start. Let's see if it runs okay. I'm going to put the chair here in case the... Uh, <laughs> Blade decides to fly off and chuck my legs off. is really satisfying to take this from the curb right find out what was wrong with it you guys saw everything i did new blade new to me it was a cracked flywheel and a sheared key in the keyway replaced all that stuff auto choke starts like a champ now this just needs to be cleaned up and i'll sell it for 100 bucks it's an auto choke. Yeah, there's no bag. Maybe I got a bag back there that might fit this. Who knows? That's awesome. <laughs> That's gold, Jerry. Gold! I want to take this opportunity to thank one of my subscribers, Mike Peltzit, who donates quite a bit of money. The most money that I've ever gotten from any subscriber. Um, 
for the channel. And uh, I just can't tell you how much I appreciate your generosity, Mike. Uh, thank you very much for your generous donations. Uh, also, thanks to all the guys who buy the stickers. It's the only way that they can support the channel. As you guys know, I don't have a job. I quit my job to be a YouTuber. <laughs> and while I'm still a starving YouTuber right now, subscribers keep coming and coming and coming. And looks like we're getting close to 8,000 subscribers, which, you know, a couple of years ago, you n I never would have thought I would have reached that kind of uh, viewership, you know? So, uh, fingers crossed, sometime soon I might hit that 10,000 mark would be a mind-blowing uh, milestone, personally, for me, you know? To get 10,000 subscribers, I mean, uh, I'm pretty satisfied with that, you know what I mean? Who knew that after only two or three years I'd reach that uh, milestone for myself? But there are some days where I have just so much stuff, you know what I mean? Because... I keep getting them for free. They, they just keep coming over and over again, you know? Just when I thought I could get a week off or some kind of a break, things just keep piling up. And I said, if I don't get to it, man, I'm never gonna get to it, you know? So there are days when I'm burned out because I make a video a day. Now I'm gonna try to take a few days off here and there, maybe the weekends, and uh, you guys might see just three to five videos a week instead of seven, you know what I mean? But. Uh, I am getting a little burned out, but it's the donations and the support that I get from the sticker buyers keep me motivated to keep on going every day, you know? All it takes for me to do, to, to, to get that motivation is to take one step forward, out the door. Once I'm out the door, I take a breath of fresh air, <coughs> New York fresh air, <laughs> and uh, look at my pile and say, what's next? And thus, there's a video. But I wanted to thank personally to Mike Peltzik for your most generous donation. Thank you very much. It's really very much appreciated. Just gonna spray my JB Weld Weld here to cover some of the holes. You know, it looks okay. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sand it or anything. Don't be silly, you know. This is just like a carcass of crap. You know what I mean? Just want to get rid of holes. That's it. We're not gonna go crazy on this. Just good enough to sell. It's gonna look way better without the holes. Here we go, guys. Jamal Alatet. Been sitting in my garage for over a year. Let's see if it starts. Choke. It's a little sticky, I'm not gonna lie. Full throttle. Here we go. Because it's a fuel pump delivery of fuel, been sitting here for so long, it takes time for the fuel pump to pump some gas into the uh, carburetor. Honestly, I'm surprised that it even starts because, I mean, cranks, because the battery's been sitting here for so long. We might have to take the hood off, take the air filter cleaner cover off, and spray some primer in there to help it out for the first start, you know? Might have to. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm imagining the fuel being pumped into the carburetor. Even when I stop it, some is trickling into the bowl. It'll reach the emulsion tube and then eventually go up. But you really should, I should have just, if you didn't have a good battery, you would have to prime it first. Yep, gonna have to prime it. I removed the air filter cover and the air filter, took it off a choke, and I'm spraying. Spraying some contact cleaner for my friends over at Lucas Oil Products. Okay. And now I'm gonna choke it again. I need 
surprise it a little. Let's hope it starts now. Ooh, almost. starting because the battery is now drained so I'm gonna have to put a trickle charge onto this and uh, try tomorrow it did start up for a second right but it seems like it was only starting up on the um, the stuff that we shot in there so maybe it doesn't have any gas that's a possible uh -oh. I just took the gas cap off and the bottom float is missing from it so I think it fell in that's not good uh-huh, got the float out, and guess what? <laughs> I looked inside, there's no gas, that's why. Unbelievable, I could have sworn there's gas in there. There's some, but not a lot. So, that could be good or bad, you know what I mean? But either way, I can't start it today because I'm gonna have to charge up that battery, you know? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this tomorrow. Uh, it'll be incorporated in my next video, I guess. So I'm really satisfied with what we did today. To get this thing that was in somebody's garbage, put a blade on there, made the blade fit, works just fine. Uh, put a spark plug in there, figured out that it was the sheared key in the flywheel, and the flywheel was cracked along the input shaft there. And uh, we replaced it with another type of quantum flywheel. And as you can see, works just fine. Starts in one pull with this auto choke Briggs quantum engine and uh, tighten up the, the attachments here for the handle. Wash this down a little bit, man. It's a hundred dollar bill when fall comes. Or actually pretty soon, spring. <laughs> Thanks a lot for joining me on today's episode. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. you guys enjoy the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.